Welcome back YouTube, another video here. So I wanna talk in this video about uh, this Ben Shapiro destroys the abortion argument, destroys the abortion argument. Okay, so uh, we're about six minutes and 30 seconds into this eight minute and 10 uh, second long video. And I feel as though Ben is simply not going over the science of uh, the different stages of birth of this baby but let's listen to some of the rebuttals that he tries to address and uh, let's uh, pick up where he leaves off. Okay, here we go. Textbook here. I think what's important here is the science. And I think you're talking about the creation of a unique human life on day one. And you can see it and you can see the growth. And if you're willing to point out to me where it is that this becomes a human as opposed to a ball of tissue, then let's hear it. Let's hear it. I've gotten tweets, by the way. I tweeted this out earlier. And somebody said, well, the brain waves only start at week 20. So how about that? The brain waves do only start at week 20. That's when it becomes a, a pain feeling, a substantial pain feeling uh, creature. And that's just the truth. Okay, so here we go. You know, do you think that people who are brain dead are alive? Well, people who are brain dead don't turn into not brain dead th three weeks later. Okay, so he's about to make the coma argument. So people that are brain dead don't turn into not brain dead. So he, he, he al aligns it more with the logic of somebody that's in a coma. Would you kill someone that was in a coma uh, if there was a chance that they could wake up in the future? No, it's not the same as that. Uh, a person that is in a coma has a life that they've already experienced. They have uh, a potential, like, you know, loved ones and things that loss will occur. Loss, pain, anguish, confusion, and death uh, can occur after 20 weeks of this baby's uh, existence, okay? So, uh, you know, when, when it starts to feel that second that those brain waves kick in is the second that it becomes a, a human in, in any logical person's book. Okay, so let's listen to this. And the a coma argument is not valid because of what I just said. Uh, it simply doesn't, it doesn't have the attachments yet, doesn't have the, um, doesn't feel uh, the, uh, the world around it. Just because it has the potential to do so does not align it with someone that has already existed and is in a coma. Oh, okay, here we go. Would you kill somebody in a coma because they're brain dead, but you know they're not going to be brain dead in four weeks, in ten weeks? Would you do that? Would you pull the plug on them knowing for a full, full on fact that if you just wait a few weeks, that person's going to be fully functional again? Would you do that? And it's just, it's, it's, it's truly incredible to me the, the way that we can blind ourselves to this. I remember when I was at the, I was at the 2012 DNC, and, uh, and I, I went to, you know, it was in Charlotte, and I walked past an exhibit. And it was a picture, it was, it was the, it was the anti-abortion crowd, the pro-life crowd. And they were out there with, with these pictures of aborted babies. And I walked past and I thought what most people from big cities thought. I thought, wow, how gauche. How gauche. I mean, those are ugly pictures. Should I really have to look at that in the public square? That's really ugly. And then I realized that that's probably how people treated pictures of slavery back in the 1850s. That's probably how people treated pictures of the Holocaust back in the 1940s. The bottom line is if it's that ugly, maybe you should do something about it instead of whining about how ugly it is. And it's not a matter of personal choice. Okay, I have a stake in whether my neighbor gets murdered. And I have a stake in whether my neighbor's baby gets murdered too. Look, all right, okay, all right, so we're at the end of it. You guys can go watch the, uh, the beginning part of it if you want. Uh, the, the truth of the matter is that obviously I, I'm of the uh, stance that uh, in the first 20 weeks, uh, it's obviously not, getting an abortion is never an okay thing, okay? You should never have sex with somebody that doesn't have a vasectomy. If you're not, or if you're not using condoms, or if you're not uh, using some other form of contraception, I wouldn't recommend using the birth control stuff or getting your tubes tied. That stuff messes with uh, women's hormones quite a bit. Uh, that's been proven. I've, I've gone into uh, depth in that, into that with in other videos here on my channel, specifically under the antinatalism playlist. Um, what I would prefer to talk about uh, now, now that we have uh, basically debunked Ben's argument here. Uh, that it's not akin to having a uh, person in a coma that wakes up in, after in a coma. Um, you know, just, no. It's just, it's just not, there's no, there's no uh, attachments, there's no, you know, they, they're not going to feel loss or, of themselves or loss of loved ones, okay? Um, and they will feel loss of themselves after week, like, 20, 
Okay, when brain waves start to kick in in there, that's when they'll feel the loss of themselves. They'll feel it going away. They'll feel the life going away. Uh, so I do not uh, promote the or the uh, I don't promote abortion after the early stages of, of gestation. Uh, only in the er early, early, early stages of gestation, like week one to t week twenty, uh, is it uh, acceptable in my book to get the. Uh, abortion based on the data that's behind me here um, this is the data that he was referencing just ret rhetorically for the first like six minutes of the video uh, it's on ncbi.gov uh, PubMed uh, journals and uh, heavily referenced journals uh, medical journals that uh, anyone can check out I'll, I'll go put them down I'll link them down below um, yeah so this is the truth. This is the science. This is the science behind it. And he just sort of uh, overrides that side of his mind just because of a, 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 a how how gauche he thought it looked. How how uh, how much it looked like a baby. And you know what? The truth of the matter is, we're six minutes into here now. Uh, coming into existence is always a serious harm, and simply not coming into existence is not a serious harm. Uh, now, after those first stages of gestation, that's when the harm begins. When that brain wave starts to flow, that's when the harm begins. That's what that point at which the harm begins, okay? Technically, the harm begins with the ignorance of the woman having sex with a man that doesn't have a bisectomy, that's irresponsible as fuck, and hasn't figured out uh, the, ba the the most true and correct philosophy that there is, uh, that coming into existence is always a serious harm and simply not of pain, anguish, loss, confusion, and death, and simply not coming into existence is not a serious harm. Uh, so you come into existence at week twenty in the baby in the in the in the womb. Okay. All right. Um, that's all I really wanted to talk about. That's what the science says. And uh, Ben's uh, pathetically weak argument towards this, uh, I hope that you understand that I've completely refuted it with the coma thing. Uh, it's just not, uh, it's not a, it's not a um, parallel uh, at all between somebody that's in a coma uh, and someone that is in the womb uh, at, uh, before the first stages of, in the early stages of gestation. Okay, I'll put a uh, link to the video that I uh, resp I'm responding to here. Uh, it's it's just Ben's very visceral response to this, and uh, it's not really. I mean, he he's, you know, he makes the argument toward around like the six minute and thirty seven second mark after he gives some of the information uh, on the science of uh, the weeks and the developmental process of a, a baby in the womb. Okay, uh, good enough video. Right, we kept it under eight minutes and or under nine minutes and uh, yeah, all right. That's all I want to talk about. Sorry for the lack of videos lately. Uh, been really busy uh, with, that, with some other stuff. I've also been looking into a lot of. Uh, I've always held this position of um, uh, basically from since I read David Benatar's book, uh, Better Never to Have Been, uh, uh, and uh, I, I cited this in the antinatalism playlist here on my channel. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, and, uh, if you're a woman out there, don't have sex with guys that don't have fucking visectomies. If they don't have the intelligence enough to get a visectomy, then you shouldn't be fucking them. There you go. Bye.